Man, just another good day for us, acclimating not to the environment, but acclimating to full pads. And, and you know, we have to continue to be open to working, to seeking perfection in terms of the things we're trying to get accomplished in that attire, um, etiquette, professionalism, things of that nature. It's an educational process uh, that goes along with kind of some of the surface level things, alignment, assignment, technique, execution. And so uh, we'll keep working in that regard. We cannot tire in that regard. It's, it's important, man. If we want to get the desired product we want in the stadium, we have to work continually um, to, to perfect our preparation environment. And there's a lot of meat on that bone. We're, 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 we've got a lot of ways to go, but I'm sure everybody does. Um, but we have to we have to have a lot of urgency in that regard. From an injury perspective, um, KZ is still out with an ankle. Uh, Corey's got a significant knee injury. Um, Keanu O'Neill is being evaluated. Uh, Leal had a minor ankle or something that caused him to miss a portion of time. Uh, Deontay, um, the no normal bumps and bruises that, that occur this time of year. Um, we'll work our tails off to keep the group up and they gotta work their tails off to keep themselves up. Availability is a big component of this. I'll pause and open it up for questions. Mike, the training is going on and we'll deliver a specific message after practice. Oh, it's between us. Yeah. I saw in Southern Charts, uh, George Cardipas, but he looked like he may have been out of the end zone. He didn't like that call. You were there for that, right? And yeah, there's going to be calls that you don't like, um, but, but the calls are the calls, and there's an educational process that goes on in environments like this, whether the call is correct or not, or whether you agree or disagree. Um, we got to move on. The call is the call. And, and so that's some of the, you know, learning that goes on for young people in an environment like this that are working their tails off to compete and it becomes somewhat emotional. Um, calls are calls. Mike, it looks like Anthony McFarland had a good day, especially in some of those one-on-one -on -one reps. Just what have you liked out of him early so far? He looks like a guy who's been in this environment and he has. Um, so so um, the consistency, you know, oftentimes we talk a lot about splash and splash gets a lot of attention. One of the points that we're trying to drive home is uh, professionals make routine plays routinely. And I think that's been the thing that's gotten our attention regarding him. The routine play, the option route, the ball in the flat, uh, the flare, and things of that nature. Um, he is doing routine things very well, and, and that's important. How does his skill set complement the rest of the backs? That to be determined. Um, you know, we'd have to know who that collection of backs is to analyze it in that perspective, and we're here to build. And so that's to be determined. Like, as far as the offensive line goes, a lot of guys that saw some people time last year back, plus some new additions. What are you seeing about the guys up front offensively that might be different as opposed to what you saw in the last year? Competition makes us better. Familiarity makes us better. Not only familiarity with what we're doing, but with each other. We've got some continuity to build upon. Uh, we got stiffer competition, which brings the best out in all of us. So, Roger, specifically, what's your assessment of him a couple days into pads and a few days of elevated reps? So far, so good. When you're looking at like offensive line, defensive line, how do you go about determining who you want to face who? What are the kind of things you consider there? Some guys are good dance partners uh, for for valid reasons. Some guys are good dance partners for intangible reasons. Just in an environment like this, particularly when you talk about people in stages of development, what you're looking for is people that are at similar stages of development. You know, Isaac and Cam Hayward are awesome work partners. Why? Well, because they're both veteran and established interior guys. And so you'll see them work a lot together. That's an easy pair to match up. Uh, but some of the developmental guys that are in the process of growing, uh, those are more difficult and we're trying to search for appropriate things. And if someone wins with a level of consistency, you elevate the matchups they're in and that's this process. When you look at Darnell and Broderick and, and how they're competing in this camp, what does that say about the college program they come from and the competitiveness of that level? I think the two national championships in the last two years says it all. Speak to the energy of Quan so far and what he's brought. It seems like just a few days in. It's... Man, I tell you, he, he's a veteran. He might be new to us, but he's not new to environments like this or to professional football, and it's showing, showing in a hurry. Looks Corey, like you have to say what? Showing you, what had he shown you up until? It was early in the process. It was our first day in pass, and that's just unfortunate, <laughs> but it's, it's football and life. Looks like you have to say whoa to Quan. Is he one of those guys? I'd rather say whoa than sick. And do I you, mean that. Do you say whoa to him? Looks like it thus far, um, but that's my job. I'll do it. Anyone else? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Mike.